Hello, I'm Jana, and welcome back to The Crafty Corner. Today, here at The Crafty Corner, we're going to be creating an Easter vignette featuring the Tim Holtz Biggs Die Shadow Box. So if you'd like to see exactly which supplies we're going to be using today, go ahead and pause here. All right, let's head over to The Crafty Corner. Today, we're going to be creating an Easter vignette, and we're going to be featuring the die sets, bunny games, and we're also going to be pulling in parts and pieces from the Tim Holtz Sizzix Big Die Shadow Box. So let's pull in the shadow box pieces first. Here, I've die cut the pieces out of some thin chipboard and some 8x8 Tim Holtz backgrounds. First, we're going to start altering our chipboard foundation. This is going to become the base of our vignette box. And to alter this, we're pulling in some Distress Paint Salvaged Patina. So we're going to put a generous amount onto our base, and then we're going to be painting that on with a paintbrush. So the main thing is to get good coverage fast. So I'm just going with the paintbrush, removing the paint around, and that's going to give us a good layer to start decorating the box. Now, the part that is painted is going to become the interior of the box. This should take about one or two coats. Salvage Petunia is a little bit light, so taking the time to do a second coat will be a good thing because I want the background to be pretty solid and no streaks. Okay pretty much there just doing a little bit more touch up the paint went on nice and smooth and i am really enjoying that color okay that should be just about good and then we will let this dry for a moment or two while the base is drying let's go ahead and pull in the top part of the vignette box so here we're just going to crease and fold the pieces together to hold everything together here, I am going to be using some collage medium. Since I have all of my folds creased, I'm now going to be going in with some collage medium. I'm going to apply this to the tabs of the box. Then I can pinch the tab to the other side and hold these sections together while the glue dries. Then I can set myself up to add more glue to the other tabs and hold them together until everything is dry okay so that's side one now let's go in for side two just spreading that glue around and then i'll be able to pinch those sides together just like that okay pretty good so for each side i'm holding these corners for approximately 10 to 20 seconds since I'm only applying a thin layer of glue, it won't take long for the glue to set up and to become nice and sticky. So going around the box isn't going to take too much time for the assembly process. Okay, so we'll just shift that, hold that corner, and this is our last corner. So let's go ahead and add that glue, and then we'll have to take a look at the next part of the box. So we're just going to go around the box and make sure that all of the lines are holding up and that everything is fitting. So since I die cut this top part with thinner paper, parts of the die have punched all the way through. So that means some of my corners and joints aren't that strong. But this is a very easy fix. We are going to be taking some Ideology washi tape. And I'll be using that to reinforce some of the areas where the die managed to punch through. This shouldn't matter too much because all of these little areas of reinforcement are going to be on the interior of the top lid of the shadow box. Okay, now let's turn our attention to the base that is cut out of chipboard. So I have got some hot glue off to the side and we're going to use that to hold the base together. Here I'm using a Sure Bonder fine detail tip hot glue gun. We're just going to be running some glue along the edges of the box on the corners. We're gonna let that set up and then I'm gonna use a finger to smooth down some of those rougher edges and that's going to give us a good solid bond so that all of our pieces will stay together. 
So I've got that bead of glue on the outside. I want to hold those sections together and I'm going to use my finger to press this down a bit. Now I'm going to be repeating this process as we work all of our way around the box. The nice thing about the hot glue is that it's going to set reasonably quick so I won't have to hold this too long as we place the hot glue down. Okay, so here we go. We have our completed box base. Now we're going to work on the adorable bunny rabbits that are going to be the main focal point of this vignette. Here I have die cut a whole bunch of pieces from the Sizzix Tim Holtz die set of bunny games and these bunnies are absolutely adorable. So of course I die cut these while they were on some double-sided sticky tape. That way assembly is going to be super easy and we'll be able to layer things up pretty quickly. A couple of the pieces I did already die cut out of some thin chipboard. I want these pieces to be a little bit more substantial. So layering up the chipboard along with some distressed watercolor cardstock is a great way to make sure that these will have a little bit of heft about them. And it's going to make it easier for when we slip these pieces into our vignette. Okay, so we've got our two double layered segments. We've got the full body bunny and then we've got the little bunny head that's going to be poking out over a mossy hill. The next part is going to be to add all of the lovely little details to these adorable bunny rabbits. Now to do that we're going to be pulling in the Tim Holtz Ranger Distress Reinkers and of course I have these set up in a Ranger ink palette absolutely perfect for when you want to do just a little bit of water coloring. To apply these, we're going to be pulling in the Ranger Fine Detailer Water Brush. Absolutely love this for quick and easy water coloring. So for colors, we're going to be starting with some Kitsch Flamingo for the insides and some of the highlights around the bunny. And we're going to also put some on the ears. So let's just go ahead and take a little bit of that Kitsch Flamingo. I'm going to start with the ears and we're just adding a little bit. We don't want this to be too concentrated. Just a pale pink will be perfect for the inside of those bunny ears. So let's just carefully work on those. Just a couple of layers and we've got plenty of color. Mm. Absolutely love the re -inkers. A little really does go a long way. Okay pretty good with those bunnies. So next we're going to want a little bit more of that Kitsch Flamingo because I think we're going to do some of the accents around the edges of the bunny. These are going to be layered so if we color in certain parts it's going to act as a little bit of a shadow and or a highlight depending on which way we're looking at these adorable bunny rabbits. Okay. And just a little bit on the face over here. Perfect. All right, let's go ahead and continue building these. So we're going to add our next layer. We're just going to carefully remove that from the sheet that we have it on. Now, I ended up using three different materials for these rabbits. We have the first layer of chipboard, then we've got the distressed watercolor cardstock, and then I have some distressed white heavy stock as well. So that should make some very nice layering. Let's put the rest of this on fast forward. Here are our adorable little rabbits. Now we're going to be pulling in some Ideology bouquet flowers and altering these so that we will have some interesting little parts and pieces to play with as we design the vignette. So we're going to be taking the tonic mini snips and we're going to be cutting off all of the little flower pieces and then once we have a good stack of these we're going to be coloring these 
white flowers using some beautiful distress spray stains. I want to try to get a really good group going and ideally we're going to end up with three different piles. We're going to have some picked raspberry, mermaid lagoon, and of course a dash of squeezed lemonade. So these are great bright springtimey colors and hopefully we'll have plenty so that we can create a fun floral Easter scene. First, we're going to be spritzing with the Distress Sprayer, and then we'll go ahead and add a splash of color. So I'm starting with the Squeezed Lemonade first so that we get this beautiful, vibrant yellow. We're just going to squish that a little bit with our fingers to make sure that everything has good coverage, and then we'll wipe up our media mat before moving on to the next batch of flowers. Mm. That is definitely starting to look very spring-like. So we'll let them partially dry on their own, but after I have everything colored, we will definitely be going back in with the Distress Ranger heat tool, and that's going to help dry things off. Okay, so the next one, let's go ahead, add our water, and then a dash of Mermaid Lagoon. So a couple of quick spritzes, and that should be plenty of color. And again, we'll just tap that beautiful color into the flowers before setting it aside and giving the table a quick little wipe down. Now a couple of the flowers didn't quite absorb as much as I want to so it's very easy to just drag that back through the spray that's on the table. But right now let's clear the deck, bring in our last bunch and this is going to be with picked raspberry. A couple of spritzes, there we go. Mm. Love, love, love the Distress Spray Stain because you get really good coverage very quickly and it is definitely very vibrant. All right, so we've got those flowers and now I'm just going to go in and give those a little bit of a dry with the Ranger Heat Tool. And here we go. We've got our florals. So we will be able to start embellishing our box next. For the box, we're going to be pulling in some tin foil. Now, I want to create a little grassy knoll inside the box. So the easiest way to do that is to take some tin foil and crumple it up in order to form a heel base. I just took my tonic snips to cut a piece of the tin foil, and now we can go ahead, give that a good crumple, and start fitting that into the box. By using the tinfoil as a base underneath the craft moss, we're going to save ourselves a little bit of hassle on the construction. To keep that in the box, I'm going to need to pull back in the hot glue gun so that everything will stay in place. Okay, so got my hill. And now for the hot glue. So we'll be pretty generous and add lots of hot glue on the bottom. And then we'll stick that right into the box and hold it maybe 15, 10 seconds. And then we'll have our foundation. Okay. That's going to work. Next, we're going to be bringing in a pack of craft moss. I found some craft moss a while ago on Amazon, and I absolutely love using this for vignettes. It's kind of a mixed pack, so... There are lots of different options in the bag that we can play with. Now, I'm kind of thinking I want one of the green mosses, so I'm just going to rummage around and try to find something nice and green that we can put right over the top of that tin foil. Ah, here we go. That should work very nicely. So, just kind of cleaning up the work area. The moss gets pretty crumbly, so I like to try to keep things as clean as possible as I'm working. So it looks like we'll need to divide this into a couple of pieces. I think I need to start with one chunk to kind of cover the front, and then I can get a second chunk to work into the back. Yep, that is going to work. So... For this, we're also going to be pulling in the hot glue gun. That's going to be the quickest way to adhesive this and make sure that nothing's going to slippy slidey. If we use claws medium, which we totally could, it would just have a much longer drying time. But for vignettes, I definitely prefer to use hot glue when building my scene. It just goes faster, sticks sooner, 
and I just find it to be a lot easier to work with all around. Okay, so we've got one more piece over here. We're just going to add a bit more hot glue and then one more chunk of moss. Ooh, already I'm starting to get this great springtime vibe. The salvage patina in the background is just the right color for a spring sky. And now we've got this beautiful mossy knoll to work with. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is clear the work area. As you can see, the moss was shedding pretty much everywhere. So we need to do a bit of cleanup before moving on to the next step. Okay, so now we want to bring in the bunny rabbits. So I think we'll start with this guy and we're going to kind of tuck him behind the grassy knoll, kind of like he's just poking his head up over the hill. He's curious. He's looking in on things. Yeah, I think we'll start there. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to add a foam square. So this is going to be very easy to slip behind. We can just tuck him in right there and perfect. We've got a happy little bunny poking his head over. Next, let's see here. I think we're going to maybe, I don't know, do we need to reposition him? No, let's add his paws because I can always add like flowers and eggs around him and then it's going to look even more like he's peeking up over the hill. Right now he's a little bit floaty, but once we start adding some props, it's going to fit. Okay, let's take that lid and we're just going to gently fit that over the top of our base. There we go. And that's going to also give me some foundation to add more pieces to. We're going to be sticking this adorable little bunny on the outside of the box so that he will be our main focal point in this little vignette. Absolutely love these bunny rabbits. They've got so much personality and they were just too cute to pass up at Easter time. Now, if you missed the original release of Bunny Games, the adorable little bunny has been paired with the paper cut chick and you can easily get the bunny and chick as a duo in the newly released Tim Holtz Sizzix from the vault. So there's still a chance to get these cute little guys. All right. Got plenty of glue. That should be good. Hmm. Happy with that. We'll just hold that for a moment or two while the glue sets up. And then we will continue to add more parts and pieces. Okay. Next, I think we're going to be pulling in the banner. Now, this is pretty simple. It's just going to sit across the box and it's adding another layer of dimension. We'll need to do a little bit of trimming so that these banners don't hang off the edges too much. That's good. So, mm, this is definitely starting to come together. Really, really happy with what I'm seeing. Now, we're going to move on and start bringing in some other pieces. I've got these little daisies, and we're going to carefully put them in the background. We're going to start with these florals, and I'll definitely do a bit of a build-up and add the other ideology floral pieces as well. But the little daisies, they come with the original Bunny Games die set, and those are just so fun to add to scenes. Got lots of great detail, and, well, I do love daisies for a vignette. Okay. Starting to look even more Eastery now. Fun part, we're going to be adding these altered ideology eggs. These came out last year, and these are wonderful little resin cast eggs. These can be altered several different ways. So in last year's Easter demo, Tim showed how to alter these using alcohol inks, distress glitter, and foil wrapping them with metal candy wraps that were covered in alcohol ink. So I've got a fair collection of stuff to pick and choose from, but I've decided to go with the brightly colored alcohol inked eggs. I think those are going to show up the most clearly on the vignette. So to attach these, we're just going to be pulling in our collage medium and we're going to be adding a 
fairly healthy dollop across the hill to tuck these eggs in at different places. But before I do that, I've also got this die cut egg. This one is also from Bunny Games, and we're going to be adding this as another point of interest on the front of our vignette. For the layers on the egg, I have a layer of watercolor cardstock and then some Yupo that was altered with alcohol ink over the top. And that's going to make a lovely colorful addition to this scene. Okay, now let's get in there and start placing all of the eggs. So we're just going to add a dash of collage medium here and there, and then we'll be able to tuck the eggs right into the scene. I think we can fit around seven or eight eggs, maybe more, but let's just start placing them and see how it looks. As you can see, against the moss, the alcohol inked eggs really, really pop. That's going to add a great splash of color in here, and this is definitely giving me the Easter vibes. Mm. The blue, really dark blue and the yellow, I think, really pop the most in the scene. Okay, so we got room for another egg in the back. Good. So let's see, that's seven eggs. Okay, let's add more florals and put this on fast forward. Hey, I am loving how all of those florals turned out. Now, before we finish up, I just want to add this cloud piece into the background. A white fluffy cloud is going to be the perfect way to tie this entire vignette together. Now, this cloud came from the die set Edison. So we're going to go ahead and tuck that right into the back, right behind our bunny rabbit. There we go. Now that to me really says spring. We've got the flowers, we've got the bunnies, we've got the eggs, and it's all really bright and colorful. And now a white fluffy cloud. Thank you so much for joining me here today at the Crafty Corner while we had a play with some Easter fun. I absolutely love diving into bunny games and getting a chance to play with all sorts of florals. We've used distress spray stains and distress re inkers to alter all of these parts and pieces into a fun Easter vignette. I hope that you've enjoyed the process, and until next time, happy crafting! <laughs>